I don't see it. I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see it. We, in fact, already heard that uh, although there is a danger of using uh, the Kremlin using weapons of mass destruction, potentially chemical weapons, we already heard today that if uh, those weapons may, and hopefully not, but may be used in Ukraine and stay in Ukraine, NATO is not going to interfere. We heard Joe Biden before, uh, even if he uh, was calling Putin the war criminal, saying that he would do anything not to uh, increase the conflict. Uh, uh, John Stoltenberg, uh, uh, Stoltenberg was saying that NATO is not party to that conflict. So it does seem that the showing of unity is important. The sanctions are important to keep to keep pressing for for the West. Uh, Vladimir Zelensky spoke again and asked for uh, no-fly zone uh, and uh, um, airplanes and tanks and so on. But his foreign minister, Dmitry Kuleba, said that we are not going to participate in the summit because we already know that NATO is not ready to accept us. So there's a little bit uh, kind of push and pull even from Ukraine. So the unity is there. But uh, the idea that Vladimir Putin at this point can be stopped probably is not there. And I believe it's a correct one. I don't think he's going to pay attention to the NATO summit uh, to see the errors of his way and withdraw from Ukraine at this time. So in light of that, and I've heard this from national security and defense officials here in the U.S. in my conversations and reporting as well, that when you're talking about Vladimir Putin, you're talking about someone who does not see losing as an option. So what would it actually take to stop him? Do we know? Well, uh, the negotiations with Ukraine, and I think Olaf Scholz, the German chancellor, said it better than anybody, or probably more often than anybody, that this is the negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. So if they come to some sort of an agreement, which, are, which is going to be incredibly unfortunate for Ukraine, but may stop the war, that is the case. And I also think that for Putin, at least if we ask for solutions, for Putin, the more weapons Ukraine gets, the less likely he will stop attacking it. So that's another conundrum that the West and Ukraine need to address, because it does seem that, I mean, it doesn't seem, they need to have more weapons to defend themselves. But the more weapons they get, the, the more forceful Russia becomes in eliminating it. So it is only the agreement uh, that uh, between Ukraine and Russia, and, and Russia, Russia wants an uh, incredible amount of concessions. But if that comes to some sort of a, um, a negotiation final point, that may stop and will let uh, troops be withdrawn. What it is for the future of Ukraine, that's another question, because um, uh, with you, will Ukraine exist as an independent nation after those, in, in, the, in the form that it is now, uh, after all these agreements, um, uh, negotiations with Putin would be met? That's a question. Mm. So no matter how this plays out, I mean, I think it's, it's safe to say the world has changed. We're having this conversation. You have high-profile investors today talking about the end of globalization, for example. Um, where Russia specifically is concerned, now that we've seen these sanctions put in place, we're seeing that economy thrust into, into turmoil as quickly as we are. Uh, what does that look like in Eastern Europe? What does it look like in terms of all of these uh, trade dynamics, potentially, between Europe and Russia and the rest of the world? Well, I mean, trade dynamics no longer, essentially no longer exist mm -hmm. uh, between Russia and, and in Europe. I mean, of course, there's still gas. And that's another thing. I mean, Putin wanted to show that gas is important uh, uh, for, for Europe and he is the, or Russia is the uh, solid supplier of it. So now, in fact, by actions in Ukraine, he only increased, um, uh, increased the time frame in which other energy supplies will be invented, created, and, and, and whatnot. So that's, that's, that becomes a problem for Russia. But I think, you know, the mood, at least in Russia, in, in official mood in Russia, is that the sanctions were coming anyway. Uh, more and more often we see, we hear from the state officials shows that what, you, what Russia is doing in Ukraine right now is it, it, it doesn't allow itself to be eliminated from the world map. So it would be would have been eliminated in globalization because that's what the West always wanted. But now it's going to create its own greatness and therefore doesn't need the world. And it does seem uh, to be a problem also for at least for the Russian near abroad because the Central Asian republics are suffering already tremendously from sanctions and and mm. un beginning unemployment and whatnot. So I think the ripple effect 
uh, if not the if if not an explosion, uh, is already here, and then soon we'll uh, we'll see more results uh, and more maybe uh, in in years to come that all countries would start being dependent on themselves rather than others. And we already saw yeah. this trend in COVID, and Putin just exasperated it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.